in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We in the church have a tendency to tame the Holy Spirit, and one of the ways we tame the Holy Spirit is by explaining the workings of the Holy Spirit. So you see, we're in a bit of a bind. The more we say, the more we tame. But we have traditionally believed that there are seven fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, I think it is, and self-control. I should know that. <laughs> um, and we, we have a list of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, prophecy, healing, visiting the sick, etc. But I want to make the case that holding a baby in your arms is one of the great moments of giftedness by the Holy Spirit. I want to make the case that looking into the eyes of another person, whether that person be a baby or an adult or a stranger, is one of the great moments of giftedness by the Holy Spirit. I've held other people's babies in my life. I've had that tremendous joy. And I know that the experience is fraught with loss and with joy and in these days with endless controversy and with uncertainty and with longing. But I wonder if we haven't, most of us, had the experience of looking at a tiny baby, looking into their eyes and realizing at some point in that relationship that they are looking back at us, that they see us. We know that for an infant to know who we are is a tall order. <laughs> it's a tall order for them to know who they are or what they are or the boundaries of their bodies. But there's something in that gaze of mutual knowing that grows as the days go by as we hold a baby. And it's a moment that for many of us, if we've experienced it, it's just an unpredictable, unnameable, implausible joy. A kind of, here you are. Right? How lovely you're looking back at me. There you are. I see you. And you're beginning to see me. Every one of us comes into being through a process like that, of being held in some way by a caretaker, even if we're kept at arm's length in ways that are um, painful for us. In some way, our eyes meet the eyes of another person, and we come to know some things. There you are, and here I am. And what a joy it is. I can see the smile on the face of a baby who looks at me and recognizes me. And I think it's a widely held moment that we cherish to be smiled at by a baby. We all know, of course, that the baby is being born next week. The birth of our Savior will be celebrated on December 25th, but the gospel this morning prepares us for something um, that extends beyond that moment of birth. That lifelong prospect of holding another in our arms or simply in our gaze, in our regard, in our imagination, in our patience, and seeing them. And I want to make the case that the first baby who ever smiled at you was a profound evangelist. And the first time you smiled at another person, whoever they were, is lost in memory now, but it was a moment in which the Holy Spirit reached out. One of the great powers of the Holy Spirit, traditionally in, in our Christian theology, is to witness to the love between the one we call God the Father and Jesus. It's to be part of their love for one another. It's to see what God is doing in someone else and to rejoice. I have a feeling 
that wherever the address of the Trinity might be, if we could come to that location, we might see the Holy Spirit in particular, looking at the other two, smiling and saying, there you are. What you are is profound goodness. What you are is life itself and creative power and salvation. Of course, when Elizabeth and Mary, both heavily pregnant, <laughs> meet with one another in this morning's gospel, they have one of those moments. There you are. Who am I that you should come to me? And in that moment of gazing into one another's eyes and smiling, in that moment of recognition, I want to say that they are celebrating a Christmas before Christmas. I want to say that they are powerful evangelists. I want to say that they are evoking for every single one of us that experience of being seen and known. And that mysterious power of the Holy Spirit that never abandons us, in which it's possible to see and be seen and for someone to take joy in us and us in them as vessels of God, as members of God's holy body. Pentecostals like to talk about this meeting between Elizabeth and Mary as the first charismatic prayer meeting, right? They're all filled with the Holy Spirit and they're yelling and um, unexpected things are happening and John the Baptist is jumping around and there's a kind of a, um, it's, it's not very Episcopalian. It's not. <laughs> but it's given to us, even by the Episcopal Church, in the lectionary to remember because as far as it may feel like it is from our experience of worship, this moment of recognition is the ground note of the action of the Holy Spirit throughout our lives. I grow in God as you see God in me, and you grow in God as I see God in you. And we're swept up into the life of the Trinity as the Holy Spirit fills us with joy for one another. There you are. There you are. It's of course a given that that's one of the joys of being in the pulpit is that I can see your loving faces, sometimes your puzzled looks as I mumble, <laughs> that I can see your joyful faces. But it happens to us in so many ways. With strangers on the street, is there not a moment sometimes that we lock eyes over our masks and we think, there you are. I know it's true as a teacher when I see my students thinking. <laughs> it's a great joy. And to be able to look and see, there you are. There you are, God. There you are, Jesus. There is the life of the Spirit, active in you as the human image of God. And I pray that this is a frequent experience for us as members of this parish and as members of the body of Christ in the church throughout the world, that we have those moments when the person next to us in the pew, or the quiet person we've never greeted, or that one who's everywhere and filled with activity and bustle, manifest God for us. As we come to the celebration of the birth of our Lord this coming weekend, I know that we're busy. I know that this is a time of, really, can I say, God-awful <laughs> confusion and stress. This is a time of controversy. This is a time when the image of God can be so hard to see. But never forget, we are born into the power of the Holy Spirit, and we're born in, by our baptisms into the life of God in the world. And as we were held, as we have held others, and as we may hold them day by day in the smallest ways, in signs of love and recognition, there you are. May our souls magnify the Lord. May that gift of God's presence be echoed back and forth between us so that I see Jesus in you and you see Jesus in me 
and the Holy Spirit, enraptured by our shared communion, looks at us and says, there you are, and there am I. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.